Hey guys and welcome to this latest video. Um, this format is going to be a little bit different because I know a lot of you guys were asking for longer videos so I thought I'd do this one without a narration over the top of my original footage um, so yeah, I can talk to you whilst I'm doing my painting process uh, and if you do like this style of video, if you like these longer ones where I go more in depth and stuff please let me know uh, in the comment section below. Uh, but for this video, we're going to be painting the Blood Angels. Uh, so I know a lot of you have been asking for that. And we're going to be doing that without using an airbrush. We're just simply going to be going over some techniques that you can use to achieve that grim dark look, uh, especially with your power armor, uh, without the use of an airbrush. Because I know a lot of you don't really go into the, uh, the airbrush scene. So hopefully you enjoy this video uh, and let's get straight into it. So first of all, uh, these are the paints that we are going to be using to achieve the red on the armor. Um, so to start off with, this is AK Black Red, followed up by Burnt Red, up to Mephiston Red, and then with a highlight of Evil Sun Scarlet. We'll not be using too much of this, but we'll just be highlighting certain edges. So firstly, um, I've put the first two colors onto my wet palette. Um, what we're going to be doing, it's sort of a dry brush technique, but essentially we're going to be watering the paint down quite a lot, and we're just going to be working as miniature, working around as miniature, stippling that paint on um, just around the miniature. Now what that does is, over time as we build that up, you're going to get loads of different variation of colours and different tones, and it, what it does for the for the grim dark uh, aesthetic. And again, don't worry if this goes on too bright at first, because obviously it is watered down. Obviously when it dries, it'll go down a little bit darker. But what we want to be doing is achieving that like pitting and that like stippling. And it just gives that armor and all over a bit more battle damaged and worn looking. I apologize as well for the state of my voice. I have got COVID. I tested positive for COVID uh, the other day. So I'm currently off work and... Uh, yeah, fun and games. I suppose there's a bonus from it. It gives me more time to paint. I am all right. I'm not too rough. It's just it's a bit of headaches and stuff like that, which probably don't help painting miniatures, staring at them all day with my eyes. And again, whilst you're doing this, don't worry about, so obviously when we airbrush and we get a lot of overspray, and you are going to get something similar to that when you're doing this effect, because you're going in all them crevices. and you It is controlled in a fashion, but it's not ultimately control so you are going to get like bits on the guns and bits that you're going to paint metal but don't worry about that we are going to come back to that uh, a little bit later one of these shoulder blades which is probably going to be this one uh, i'm going to leave that i am going to do it but we're going to repaint over that black so i want the the trim to be in the same red but i want one black shoulder blade uh, or depending on how you like to do your your blood angels i i tend to do mine uh, more black and red uh, with a hint of gold rather than like gold everywhere. And whilst you're doing this, just make sure you get in uh, into all those crevices. Um, but the beauty of this as well is when we come to like doing the highlight stage, you can actually stipple on top uh, of certain areas, uh, which is going to you know get your light sourcing. So if you've never, you know, people always say you can only achieve that with an airbrush. No, you can actually do it with using this method as well. As we get into some higher colors like the Mephiston Red, at some point we are gonna to switch to a brush and we're gonna use like a little scratchy, scratchy style motion um, to add even more scratches and worn effect to the arm. And it will, you know, we'll get into that a little bit later with like a little bit more edge highlighting. So once you've done that first coat, if you want to, you can actually go back in depending on how light you've put it on. And obviously this has been undercoated with a um, Scale 75 matte black primer. Uh, this is a really dark primer, which is obviously gonna make this, once this is dry, which we'll cut to in a second, it's gonna darken it up just a little bit. Don't worry about areas like this, you know where you can see more red uh, than this, because this is gonna be black. Um, but again, you can go up and step on that. We're gonna we're gonna address those issues. Now, as you can see, now that's um, dried. It has gone uh, quite dark. I'm just gonna apply a little bit more because you can go over in multiple layers if you really want to build it up, just on that helmet and stuff. Because obviously we did water it down. But each sort of layer that you do, because you're leaving gaps we we being stippled on it again. You know, I'm gonna keep repeating this. It's gonna add to that that darker 
like battle worn look. You know, it, it's all all these layers and all these little things that we're doing is gonna overall achieve that <clears throat> that look that we're wanting to uh, to go for. Because I've got that matte black primer as well, it's, it, it does sort of turn your first few layers of paint more matte looking. But obviously as we build them up, that's going to start to disappear. But if you do enjoy that, you know, that matte look, you later on in the process, if you want to go over with like a matte spray, you can do that. So now we're going to move up to the, to the burnt red. Uh, and what I want to do for this is areas that I really, really, really want to, you know, be in shadows, I'm going to sort of avoid or just only stipple in the a right little bit <clears throat> but this is where you're going to start to see the effect of that battle worn really get into play so that side at leg zero and stuff i'm going to leave i know it looks like a big difference here because it's wet but i'm going to leave a little bit uh, of that original darker red showing through but this this is quite a really quick fast effective way of a painting your miniatures and you, you know the look is a little bit in my eyes better than you know some of that envy metal style stuff but we shoulder blades as well areas that are going to be in shadow like this black area this back area not black area um i'm going to leave them a little bit darker as well obviously don't worry too much about the uh the jump in tonal color because as you can see on this leg it's starting to dry uh it'll all come together and uh, blend in and again as i've been talking here you can see how fast i've just done those two two initial layers so now that that's dry you can see the year uh, it has dulled down from what it initially looked like uh, when we first did it i am gonna again go over this with the burnt red again uh to some of the other areas that uh, you know appear a little bit darker but when i'm doing this second layer of the burnt red I'm going to pay more attention to, you know, like the light sources or the lights coming down and hitting it. So it's just going to be a little bit tighter. And I know I mentioned this in a previous video where each each like highlight layer, you want to fetch it in a little bit tighter um, and, and, and tighter and tighter. And that just, you know, gives your light source that more look rather than having one big bright shoulder blade and then the rest of it uh, in shadow. Now we're going to do the exact same stippling effect again uh, for one layer of the Mephiston Red. And this is where I'm going to really pick out, you know, where I want those highlight points to be. As so we've got like a, a 45 degree angle. I think I'm going to let the light source come down uh, from this way. But just imagine where that light will be hitting. If you're not 100%, just hold it under a lamp or a light and it'll gear... Uh, a basic decent idea of where that light source is going to fall again it does look scary doing it this way with the amount of tonal difference uh, with, the, with, with between the colors however you know once that's dry it's just going to look exactly the same as all the others this is where we'll start to lose a little bit of the uh, the matte um, because gw paints tend to be more on the satin side of uh, colors again i'm not too worried about that shoulder blade because as we said I, I think i'm going to do that that black we'll see <laughs> as we get a little bit uh further into it popped the macro uh, adapter on just so you can see some of that pitting uh in action but once we've added our other layers we're going to add some more scratches and breakdowns but you can sort of see especially around down near the feet and stuff don't worry about gaps and stuff like that because that's just going to overall add to the to what to the weathering but you can see with just those three little layers we've already built up texture uh, and pitting and looks battle damage on the armor already so for this next stage um all i've done so i forgot to hit the record point i've started a little bit of it already is evil scum scarlet and i'm paying special attention using the same effects as what we've just done, like edge highlighting, using that stippling effect and that scratchy effect. But I'm doing it to areas where I sort of want your eyes to be drawn, so like it's got a little bit more on the helmet and stuff. But again, I'm just going to grind and catch some of those edges. But a little bit later on when we come to like battle damage phase, we are going to create a little bit more separation. 
with those panels once we've uh, added our washers and other things like that. And again, whilst I'm doing this, I just want to say a huge, huge thank you to everyone who's come along so far and subscribed. You know, I've not been going that long in, in, in the grand scheme of things with YouTube, but I'm just blown away with how many people have subscribed and stuff already. I honestly thought at this stage, just a little bit over a month, that I'd probably only have like 12 people watching my videos or something, but yeah, this, this community is awesome, so thank you uh, to everyone who's, who's come along so far uh, and get something from these videos the little bits like this here we are going to add some more battle damage into that there's like a little groove on its knee i've purposely done that during the construction and like putting together the miniature i sometimes add little chunks and get my scalpel and stuff and pull little bits out of it just to add a little bit more battle damage to the miniature or if you wanted you don't even have to class this as grim you could just do this to your normal miniature, so if you do paint in the Envy Metal style, just try using some of the techniques out of this video, uh, and, and you know it's just gonna make your army if you if you do play uh, stand out a little bit more than you know what, what other people might have on the table. It, you know, it's a little bit different. And I'm surprised as well, actually, even though GW paints are quite satin, I think because I've got that matte undercoat, it's still stayed pretty mat so that's it so far that's as far as i'm gonna go uh for the uh for the power armor at this stage we are gonna again once we've done as washes and stuff gonna add a little bit more to that uh, so for the next phase all i'm gonna do is because of again obviously we've stippled onto things i'm just gonna go in and black out some of the areas uh, so there'll be a little bit of a, a time jump uh, from that next phase so now obviously i've just blacked out all the areas that i wanted to uh, be black <clears throat> like in your crevices and it's like his under armor like, like fabricy stuff and i've just gone on and used a lead belcher and just uh, pre-coated base coated everything uh, that i want to be metal on the miniature now we're going to add a wash. Now I wasn't sure if I'm going to use enamels um, or uh, oil paints. I am going to use oil because uh, I got this yesterday, which is Aptalong 502 Smoke. So I want to give it a little trial. I have got, um, I did paint another one of these in the exact same style, but with a bit more gold using an enamel. Um, so this phase is entirely up to you, uh, but I'll show that at the end just so you can see the differences between like ones with gold armor and the ones with, with black armor. Uh, and red rather than red black and gold uh, i'm going to put a little bit of gold on this on the uh on the uh studs here and i might even do uh the 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 uh, crest on his on his chest plate oh really quickly before we do that the stippling what we did with the red i'm just going to add a little bit to this shoulder blade using smoke black and we're just going to do the exact same pitting slash stippling that we've uh, previously done on the armor. And I'm gonna leave some of the bottom sections black, uh, but I'm just literally just gonna do that just to add a little bit of texture uh, and highlight to uh, that, that, that shoulder blade. I would advise if you're gonna add transfers to add them at this stage. And if you wanna put like a matte spray or a satin spray, I'd do that at this stage as well. Uh, before we go into the wash phase. I'm not going to do that because I don't have any uh, Blood Angels stickers, vinyls, transfers, whatever you want to call them. Uh, I could paint them on, but uh, just for the purpose of this video, I didn't want it to be too long. But I would advise doing that at, the, at this stage. It does look a little bit bright for my liking at the minute, but once that's dry, it will dull down. And also a bit of time we've put uh, as oil wash on there. I'll have uh, dulled it down a little bit as well. Wish me luck, guys. This is my first time using this. The only thing I don't like about oils, because I work pretty quick, is uh, is I just uh, I hate the, I hate the drying time. And I know it, it does look good in end. God, I quite like this uh, this color. I like it. It's nearly black. But the beauty of this is, if you do make any mistakes once it's dry. We can go back in there with some uh, mineral spirits and uh, wipe it away. I'm not too worried uh, about it running here and there onto the miniature because we could, again we can wipe that away. We can use it as 
streaks on the miniature. But you can see even without a varnish it is running into those crevices pretty uh, pretty easy. Now I'm applying it quite heavy to that shoulder blade because I want it to act like a filter and dull it down a little bit. I didn't, I didn't like it that grey. And that's it, so once you've done that, what you need to do now with it being an oil paint is wait about 362 years and uh, it might be half dry, then wait another thousand, and you might be somewhere in <laughs> here. Uh, no, you want to leave it about 30 minutes or so uh, before we start getting a cotton bud and, and wicking away and wiping away some of those areas. So I'm just going to leave it for about 30 minutes, come back to it, uh, wick away some of it, and then we'll have to wait again just a little bit longer for that to dry. It's the only downside, but if you batch paint in, then uh, yeah, that, that's a bonus because you can move on to your other miniatures if you're painting like an army and stuff uh, leave it overnight or whatever and uh, off you go so once we're sort of dry all I'm getting is a little bit of mineral spirits uh, cotton bud and I'm just gonna go in there and uh, wipe away some of that uh, excess oil if you're wanting uh, some more tips on how to paint grimdark metal uh, I've done a little series uh, on this channel where you, you know three ways to get the grimdark style on metallics with, without using oils or enamels so if you're interested in that then I highly recommend going and uh, checking checking that section out but I must say I am a big fan of this uh, smoke black so for the battle damage stage again I'm going to use the the black but it's going to sound weird to start off with I'm going to use uh, a dry brush now this is a really old uh, artist opus extra small dry brush uh, the the I've used it that much, the bristles are a bit knackered on it, but it's going to be perfect uh, for what we need to do. So I'm going to dry brush a little bit of black in there first on certain areas. <clears throat> but you can also use this for stippling as well. So if you want to, if you don't want to use like the sponge technique, you can feel free to use that. But because I want this to be quite heavy on the battle damage, I'm going to start and uh, stipple some of that on. It does want to be watered a little bit. So make sure you're watering that down, even though we are dry brushing. Remove as much as you can off your brush. Uh, but you can see here I'm using a, a mix of like stabbing and stabbing motions uh, as well. And then we're going to go in a little bit later and actually paint some in. By hand, like paint some longer scratches and stuff. But I'm just catching at this stage, like some of the edges and stuff. Start moving around, you can... When you start to concentrate on certain areas, you can see where that original first stage, what we did, the stippling really comes into play, uh, which adds to that like warm, battle-worn damage look. I always put more battle damage down towards the, uh, the, the, the bottom of the legs and stuff where, you know, it, it's naturally going to be more battle-worn. Um, but as you move up, you might just pay special attention to areas like on the shoulder blades and stuff where, you know, if, if this guy were real, he'd been moving a barn and on his kneecaps and stuff and he'd have been getting bashed up and things like that. Again, take your time in this phase. I'm just doing it pretty quick just to uh, show you for purposes of this video. The trick to these little scratches as well is just using edge and just having not much paint on your brush and just lightly pressing on. If you need to do a couple of strokes, then that's absolutely fine. Next stage, back to lead belcher. And all we're going to do, so for the for the battle damage we've just added, the areas that are really prominent, we're just going to go in and add a tiny little bit of uh, the lead belcher as though it's gone down to uh, the bare metal. And when you go in around your miniature, little bits like that hole on his leg, you can paint in little pieces like that as you go. And the same at backpack, I recommend painting up them uh, bolts as well. It just it just sort of adds to it. But especially down here in eight legs is when you really want to be adding some metal as though, you know, this guy's been through it and paint's come off his, his armour. So there's one final highlight to the armour. So obviously we want to be highlighting underneath some of those scratches and stuff. We're going to use Evil Sun Scarlet. Uh, mix that in with a right little bit of uh, any sort of yellow, like this is Vallejo Sunset Orange, uh, ice yellow, anything like that. You don't want it to be too pink. You want it to be more on the yellowy orange side. 
and we're just going to highlight some of those areas and then go back into the armor uh, as one final initial highlight but again you only want to be really sparing with this and i know i speak about this a lot with battle damage you're just going to make everything stand out and look a bit more 3d on your miniature for like the edge highlighting on some of the armor we're only going to do that in a stipple motion or a scratchy motion so we don't want it to be a full perfect envy metal style it'll just if you've spent all that time doing the original base coat stuff and then put like a solid line then it's going to sort of ruin uh, that effect and you can paint if you want to little scratches and stuff onto uh, areas where it'll be like a, a lighter scratch but it's not gone deep enough to uh, affect the, the the paint work where it's come off also while i've got the blackout <clears throat> when it comes to your bolter feel free to paint these you know i'm always i always you know try and do tutorials but i always try and advocate you know coming up with your own color schemes and put your own little unique touches on if you want to do it red you can do it red if you want to do it blue do it blue pink magenta rainbow color whatever you whatever tickles you fancy and um, i'm just going to go for black for the purposes of this tutorial and it is watered down because i do want some of that if you've got like a black contrast paint then use the black contrast paint because you will get some of that uh metallic shining back through but when i'm applying this again i'm doing it in that like stippled motion so that some of the uh <clears throat> the silver shows through giving the impression of you know this bolter has uh, been bashed about a little bit as well now for the gold i'm not going to go too fancy uh, with the gold i'm just going to add a little bit to the gun i'm going to leave that chest plate black just because it's hard to get to but these little studs on the shoulder blade they're going to be uh, uh, gold as well but for that i'm just going to use a really something really simple which is literally gold by uh, AK. But you can use whatever gold you want and highlight it and, you know, wash it. But because these studs, you know, like myself, a stud, <laughs> they're going to be uh, so small, I'm not really going to pay too much attention to them. But we're really careful with these. When it, when it comes to stuff like this, just get a little bit of paint on your brush uh, and just dab it on. You'll be surprised at how far a little bit of paint can go so you saw i only had like a tiny little bit then and i did four studs on that whole on that whole thing now one final thing that we're going to do on this miniature uh, before we call it a day <clears throat> is the eyes i'm going to quickly show you how i paint uh, my eyes on uh, some of my miniatures I, I don't like the green i prefer this little color that i'm going to do so we're going to use white to start with and again you want to be very careful with this stage but we're just going to paint the entire lens uh, in white and this will uh, this white will become apparent in just a moment this is so hard to do it at the distance that i'm away from the miniature to the so that you can sort of see it on camera and apologies if this angle's horrendous these things are tiny Bit like something else i know that's small once they're dry all we're going to use is the contrast paint pterodon turquoise and just paint that uh, over the white eyes that we've just that we've just done and then as a, a final little pop we're going to go back in with that white uh, straight after this and uh, add add a little bit of white just in dot in the lenses just to make it pop again if you want to use like an ice blue or something as well you can do that if you want to spend a bit more time on eyes uh building them up but don't be scared to slap this on and if you get it on the lower part of this lens it doesn't matter because it's just going to act as a little bit of like osl so all i'm going to do now is just add those uh white dots in and that is the uh, miniature pretty much finished um so again i'm going to call it a day for this you know if you want to add some little bit more details and stuff like the rust you can do that uh, but again i want to thank you for watching this video if there's any you know the more techniques you want to know anything about please let me know in the comment section below and if you could it would really help me out it only takes one second and i'll uh, I'll, I'll sit here and wait while you do it is just go and press that like button for me and uh, if you want to leave me a comment feel free if you've got any questions is there you know is there a legion that you want to see next 
or anything like that, let me know. I have got Imperial Fist coming up. I've got a really nice colour recipe for the uh, Imperial Fist. So that's uh, probably going to be the next video. And if you're not already, please remember to hit that subscribe button. And uh, a huge, huge thank you uh, again for coming along and checking this out. And if you do like these more in-depth, longer commentary videos where I'm rather than narrating off the top of some footage, where I'm actually talking whilst I'm doing it, let me know if you prefer which ones you prefer. I might do a mix of the both, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, let me know what you think in comment section below. But thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.